Hello everyone, I'm Elizabeth Kugler and it's my great pleasure to be presenting our work to you today. So as you all know, a lot of our data in biomedical sciences is imaging data, particularly from microscopy. And so we're faced with this huge challenge on how to translate these images into knowledge. And so what this means is really that we want to go from these raw data to something meaningful in quantification, such as, for example, the number of cells, their volume, their intensity or their angle. And this is the whole focus of this conference. But it's not just kind of a minor challenge, but it's actually a huge challenge for the whole field. And we see this when we actually make a poll asking scientists what is the biggest challenge for them when working with microscopy. And over half of them actually say it is the data analysis. And this is what we see here in this Twitter poll where we had over 607 70 responses. So it is quite an extensive problem. So we need data analysis workflows that allow us to bridge these gaps. And to develop these workflows, we have commonly five different steps. The data acquisition, understanding, processing, interpretation, and dissemination. But these steps are not just in isolated and just acting by themselves, but they're actually very highly interconnected and influencing each other. And that's not just in one direction, but in many different directions. And so we need to consider all of this to allow us to produce hypothesis driven data acquisition as well as data analysis workflows. And what this means, I will show you today with two different examples. In the first one, we will look, look at how data acquisition impacts data analysis using light sheet fluorescence microscopy on the brain vasculature in fish. And the second one is where we look at how data actually impacts data acquisition using aeroskin microscopy on retinal glia cells. So without further ado, I want to come to this first example where we look at the brain vasculature and this 3D rendering here is showing you kind of the sheer size of the structure that we're looking at. So it's about 600 micrometers in width and about 300 micrometers in depth. And as you can appreciate, we need a special type of microscope. And so for this, we use light sheet fluorescence microscopy where we have this uncoupling of the excitation and emission beam. And rather than a point source of light, we actually use a light sheet to illuminate a single plane. And this allows us to not only have reduced phototoxicity, but also achieve this increased tissue penetration. But this comes with its own challenges because obviously light sheet microscopy comes with a huge data size that we need to tackle. And the other side is also that when looking at the vasculature, that actually if you compare the vessel's information with respect to the whole image, that is actually very little information that we have with the vessels. So any analysis can be very prone to background and we need to consider this. But in addition to those two challenges when designing our data analysis workflows, we have three more. Namely, we need to be able to select the region of interest, for example, just the midbrain or just the left brain hemisphere. Also, it needs to, very, to be very usable. And lastly, we need to have various different parameters to be extracted because for different biological questions, we might need different readouts. So we developed CVQ, which is the Semifish Vascular Quantification Tool in Fiji, which comes with a graphical user interface, as you can see here, and is described in a very recent development paper. But I just want to very sh briefly showcase that in this study, we not only developed a tool, but actually to make it even more kind of open and, and user friendly for users, we actually already showed some application to different drug screens as well as morpholino based knockdowns to really show how we can combine different screens with these data analysis approaches. And today I don't want to talk about the biology but I want to come back to what does this mean from a computational point of view because obviously we have these five challenges and we need to use them to develop our data analysis workflow. So in terms of data size, what we tried to do was that we had um, batch processing and downsampling, which allowed us to then run very computation demanding steps, even on very small machines. We examined specific filters that allowed us to extract the vasculature, which come from the medical field, and we implemented a manual region of interest selection so the users can focus on the regions that they're interested in. For usability, we have really tried to integrate user feedback from a very early point on, but also, as you see, we have a Fiji macro as well as graphic user interface, which makes it very accessible in terms of code, but also in, in terms of adaptability. And lastly, we extract nine different parameters, so the users can really choose the parameters that are the most meaningful to their experiments and, and their biological questions. And so this is one example of how we use data acquisition to to kind of design and, and really develop our quantification approaches. 
And now I want to take the kind of different perspective and switch from kind of data acquisition to analysis from data to data acquisition. So how can the data really impact our kind of um, data acquisition? And for this, I want to come to retinal glia cells in um, the Cebrofish retina. And for those of you who are new to this model, glia cells are very important support cells of the retina, which link various different cell types in the retina, such as the photoreceptors, the neurons, as well as the blood vessels. And they not only link them spatially, but also they link them functionally. And so to do so, they have a very specific shape that we can use as a readout of their health state and functionality. And you can see this here where we have five different subdomains and each one of them has a specific function that I won't be talking about today. But um, each one of them, as you can appreciate, is very highly defined and also very small in scale. So this is a 10 micrometer scale bar and you see that these features are very, very small. And so we're not using light sheet, but actually air scan microscopy to be able to resolve these features. And so with Aeroscan, what we can do is actually push beyond the diffraction limit of a normal confocal microscope and actually acquire data at 120 by 350 nanometers. So this is X and Y. And we can actually have an increased signal to noise ratio, which is what you can see here if you compare this confocal versus Aeroscan. However, because we have this point source of illumination, we do have a problem with tissue penetration and we have a set axis signal decay. So this is going deeper into the stack, you lose information. And so when we look at our data, this is what we kind of work with as a standard. So in Magenta, we have a stable transgenic line where we visualize all the cells within the retina. And in green, we have an individual cell labeled, which is what we can achieve by injecting DNA to visualize an individual clone. This is just a 3D rendering. And here we see just a zoom in to showing us that these structures are very, very small in scale. And this is um, one example of the quantification. In this case, it's, we, we analyzed different orientations. But all of this is hugely important because obviously these data um, tackle us with different challenges. So one issue is data comparability because we work in the retina, which is a very round tissue. We have this problem of said axis signal decay, which is what I mentioned when you have a point or confocal um, type illumination. And we have these apical basal differences within the cells that also come with signal heterogeneity. And laterally, we have the cell connectivity, which makes it very challenging to extract individual cells. And so what we're trying to do is really now take this information from the data and fine tune the data acquisition and the workflows. And so in terms of acquisition, we look at different ways to standardize the region of interest and really improve our microscope settings, not only in terms of set axis signal decay, but also with respect to the actual sampling frequency. We looked at how to improve our kind of embedding and sorting with respect to these apical basal differences and making sure that the cells are very neatly aligned to the imaging plane. And we're looking at different ways to um, analyze the cell to cell connectivity. And at the moment, as I've shown you, we use DNA injections to analyze individual clones. And so these are just some examples of what we're doing. Obviously, we're doing many more things, but I think it's a very nice example of showing you that it's not just your kind of data acquisition impacting your, your workflow but also the workflow having to impact your data acquisition so it's really a bi-directional conversation that we're needing to have and so I think it's very important just to kind of summarize all of this and say we need to have an iterative process of developing these workflows and that needs the openness from experimentalists as well as data analysts so it needs to be really a very open conversation but we need more support from the institutes and funders, particularly with respect to looking at not developing new tools, but maintaining them and improving them and making sure that they're validated and tested over time. And I think one huge issue, especially with light sheet and large scale advanced microscopy data is the data handling, the metadata and archiving and how we process all of these data. And obviously kind of we come now into this age of data integration and machine learning, but I think we're still like stuck on very, very different kind of aspects on the data handling and only once we have faced all of this we can then really very meaningful employ data mining and machine learning and if you're interested to learn a little bit more about all of these aspects of my talk we have just very recently published a perspective piece together with fantastic collaborators across different fields where we talk about how you can take steps towards successful multidisciplinary bioimage analysis collaboration. And so with this, I want to thank everyone involved, particularly all the supervisors from the University of Sheffield and the University College London. I want to thank the funders from the University 
of Sheffield and the Morpheus Eye Charity. And I want to thank the community for all their support and kind of coming together in this conference. And lastly, I want to thank all of you. And if you have any questions, please ask them now, leave a comment or um, email me and also follow us on Twitter so we can kind of keep this conversation going. Thank you very much.